This video here deals with the importance of analyzing our data that we obtain during experimentation. Uh, it deals with precision, accuracy, and percent error. Now, precision and accuracy are two terms that are used almost synonymously in society, but they do have big differences. When we're talking about precision and accuracy, we're talking about several things. Now, precision primarily deals with how close your results are to each other. So you can think about precision as the closeness or the, the repeatability of your results. Your accuracy, however, is going to be how close you are to the target. So your closeness to the target. So if you equate this to, say, a test, everyone wants to score 100% on the test. That's everyone's objective, that's everyone's goal. However, very few people ever do score 100%. So say you were to take the same test five times in a row. You were gaming for 100 every single time. You might get scores of 75, 82, 87, whatever it might be. Now how close you are to the score of 100 is your accuracy measure. Precision, however, is how close your results are to each other. Let's say every time you took a test, you ended up with an 87%. You would be considered a very precise test taker. Now, if your goal was 100% and you ended up with 87 every time, that's not necessarily what you're looking for, but it's not too far away. The picture at the left gives us bullseyes with arrows. Which one of these pictures is both precise and accurate at the same time? Hopefully, you pick the upper left. Is it possible to be precise but inaccurate? Well, the answer to that is correct and usually just needs a small calibration. The answer to that one is down here in the lower left. This one on top is an example of where we actually have low precision but good accuracy. And this one right here, the bottom one, is neither. The last measure that we're going to look at is something called the percent error. Percent error is very much related to how close your value is to the accepted answer. Um, I know we don't have the most sophisticated lab equipment in the world, but even if we did, a certain amount of error is always present if you conduct any lab at less than ideal conditions of pressure and temperature and purity and that type of thing. And so what we look at is a comparison of what it should be compared to what we actually obtain in the lab. And this, to a certain degree, measures how well you actually conducted the lab. The equation that we're going to use for this comes in various forms, but what it comes down to is we have our experimental, that's the value you get, minus the actual, that's the accepted value, actual or accepted, divided by the actual accepted times 100. Now it's important to note we have these lines up here. That's an absolute value which means this is always going to be positive. For the purposes of doing this particular calculation, you can also think about these as parentheses. You must obtain an answer for the numerator before you divide by the actual answer. This top part of the equation is called the error. To get the percent error, simply run through, divide it by the actual, and multiply by 100. Here's an example problem for you. If you conducted an experiment and you came up with a value of 15, but the actual value was 20, what would your percent error be? Well, to set up the equation, you take 15 minus 20, and you're going to place the whole thing over 20, times 100. The first part you would have to do is the top part. 15 minus 20 is negative 5. However, this must be an absolute value, which gives you a value of 5. 5 divided by 20 is 0.25. Multiply that by 100, our percent error, 25%. Not the greatest percent error in the world, but not the worst either.